Samurai, welcome back to Game Division. Um, sorry, J Bug, I missed you, but you're still watching for some reason. Um, this is gonna be a blind play on Kit. I have no idea what this game is. I don't remember why I have it. Uh, I cannot use my controller apparently, so we're gonna use the mouse and do a new game. Lore Library. I like campfires, but that's not a fire. That's like hello, fellow traveler. Oh, hello. Did you lose the trail? Come, have a seat by the fire. This is no night to be wandering these woods alone. I'll say. You see, this is a special night, one oh. rarely seen. Let me tell you a story to make the hours pass. It's nighttime. One not many know of, and even fewer believe to be real. What do you see in this piece of stone? A stone! Yes, it is small, not much to look at, and to most, not of any particular use. Yet it is not of irrelevance to the story that I am about to share with you. Is that stone, you is see, that it? every 100 years or so, a strange event occurred. As the days grow short and the nights long, a night darker than others ensues. It is said that when the moon leaves the sky, as darkness envelops the land and the stars awaken, you can hear the sounds of being rarely seen. And if one lingers in the dark shadows waiting for sight to return, things that any other night would seem to be one thing, appear to be another. It was during a night like this that a small, in the scope of the world, insignificant creature with no name was born. What slow. is this place? The insignificant creature without a name wondered as it emerged from the ground and began to explore the dark world. Calm shrew. Am I the insignificant creature? The small creature explored its surrounding. Suddenly, as the small creature stood silently next to the large stone, beautiful glowing beings joined in dance appeared out of the darkness. The creature beheld them in awe, before they, just as quickly as they appeared, 
vanished into thin air, seemingly unaware of the small creature who so longed to reach out to them. I like mystery games like I like Grey Matter, but this may be too much mystery for me. I need some kind of context. I think you're getting invested, like, like, oh, you're a thing, go. The warmth emanating from the coals had almost faded when something seemed to reignite them. The small creature watched the coals for a while, spellbound by their calming glow. The small creature walked across the field. Stalks began to sprout from the wet soil.
the button is not intuitive. God damn it. I don't know what these symbols mean. The small creature carefully picked up the bowl along with the dried flowers. Now I take this man to The stones were too good. In the middle of the clearing, there was a mound of stones that seemed to have concealed something. Stuck between the stones were two branches tied together to form a cross. What was I doing below those stones? The creature wondered, standing next to the hole it just crawled out of. Okay, now we're starting this game properly. The creature tried to collect some of the cold water. Hmm. No, no, that's not how it happened. Oh, so now I'm gonna get yelled at for doing the story wrong. The small creature thought about taking one of the mushrooms, but they didn't look all that tasty. The small creature barely managed to pick up the heavy grinding stone. the edge of the woods, there was another circle of mushrooms, seemingly too small to dance in. Some believe that certain alv circles hold the power to transport alvor and people alike across vast distances. I wonder why this one is so small. Could it be that alvor vary in size? The creature wondered while trying to imagine a small gathering inside of the ring. The small creature thought of It is believed that circles of mushrooms spring up when alve appear to join one another in dance. If an unlucky man or woman should join them in their dance, they would find that time passes faster within the Alv circle, and years may go by while they are engrossed. I wonder why this one is larger than the other one, the small creature said to itself while pondering the reason for its size. Reaching into the hole, the small creature felt something flat, round and hard. As it removed the object from the hole, it saw that it was an old coin.
A large stone could often be found at the center of our circles. How they got there, no one seemed to know. In some of the stones there were holes, said to be surrounded by strange symbols. These holes could be used to summon and gain boons from Alvor by presenting them with a gift. On the other hand, if the offering was... Is there really someone strong enough to move a stone like this? The creature looked at the large stone, its eyes filled with fear and admiration alike. Moist firewood was of no use. The moist Hey! An angry voice emanated from the shed as the creature was about to pick up the piece of cloth laying on the ground. I found that. If you want it, you'll just have to bring me something else that I can use. the small creature touched it, the top part of the shaft easily came off. The tools were The tools looked to be in a Next to the shed laid a pile it's too bad the farmer didn't move the wood inside after working so hard to cut it. The small creature thought as it looked at the pile of... These tools seem to have been used for a long time. The small creature... guard stomp appeared to have made the shed his home. A guard stomp is a being that tends to the farmer's land and tools, watching over the daily activities on the farm to make sure that nothing bad befalls it or its inhabitants. My understanding is not Hello? The small creature said politely. Who are you? The guard stomp looked at the creature I'm the one who looks after this place. No simple task, mind you. The master of the farm hasn't been tending to the land enough this season, so I have to make up for his stupidity by working myself to the bone. The guard stomped muttered in a stern yet slightly proud voice. You're a small one, aren't you? I haven't seen something like you before. Where did you come from? The small creature looked at the guard stomped. I'm not sure. I remember waking up beneath a stone mound, and as I crawled out, the first thing I saw was the stars. Do you know why I'm here? The small creature asked hopefully. I see. Beneath the old stone mound. The guard stomped appeared to remember something, becoming quiet for a moment before continuing. No. I'm afraid I don't know why you were born into this place, little one. Nor do I think there is truly a place for you here at the farm. You should look for a place of your own elsewhere. The small creature hung its head. Don't fret, little one. You'll find your place in... Even 
soften though the fire. As the small creature moved. What a nice feeling. The creature thought to itself. Take the cartwheels. The cartwheels were buried too deep. A pair of wooden cartwheels had been piled. I wonder why they were left here. Didn't the? Touching the scarecrow, the creature could feel the drop. In the middle of the field, there stood. Hello. The small creature. The small creature managed to pick up. A caused a couple of the seeds sown by the farmer to grow rapidly, an occurrence you would only be able to see. I wonder if I grew that fast when I was born. Small creature, although curious. On a hill beside the field, there was an old house which looked to have been the home of many generations. The small creature quietly watched the house. I wonder what it's like to have a place to call home. I very much would like to know what it feels like. The windmill was too. In the distance, you could barely make out an old windmill used to mill the gr The small creature watched the dark shape of the windmill. What a tall building! It thought. What? What? No matter how hard it tried, <laughs> the sky had a strange feeling to it that night, almost as if the stars themselves had come to life trying their hardest to make up for the absence of the moon's glow. There are so many of them. The small... Alright, so now we go here and we grab the needle and we stab the pumpkin. We have to get that blanket out. The small creature tried. In the remains of the old cra oh, yeah, yarn. One of the crates looked to have been broken long ago. Maybe I could find something. The creature searched the book. The small creature picked up. It's like a tiny sword. You're welcome to touch me. The hustum did not seem to want. In the far corner of the dark room sat an old hustunt, stroking his long grey beard. These household deities guard the farmer's homes, keeping any unpleasant beings at bay while watching over the daily chores involved in running the household. 
As the creature approached the corner of the room, a grumpy voice emanated from the darkness. Who are you to enter my home when invited? If you came to steal, know that a meager creature like you would be no match for me. In the dark corner sat an old hustumped, staring at the creature. Please forgive me, the small creature responded anxiously. I didn't mean to disturb you. I was simply curious about this place. I'm lost, you see. The hustumped looked at the creature for quite a while before breaking the silence. Well, you certainly don't look capable enough to be the thieving kind, he muttered to himself. But if I find that you conspired with him to steal my hat, you will be sorry you revealed yourself to me. The hustumped became quiet for a while, seemingly calming down. Although perhaps I could be persuaded to part with a couple of my belongings in return for something to calm my hunger. After all, most of these items have been gathering dust down here for as long as I can remember. But don't bring me anything fancy. I don't like brown nosing. Anything that will take care of my growling stomach will do. I'm not a big fan of oats myself, but I, I get it. Hmm. No. Oh, come on. What am I supposed to do for food then? Hmm. The spoon's missing. Alright, so we can put. Hmm. <laughs> There's even that extra hum. It's just kind of like, what are you, stupid? Hmm. No. Creature hung the water filled kettle above the fireplace. The small creature. Hmm. Oh, 
Hey, it is hunger. You sure didn't hurry now, did you? The Hastamt muttered. Were you planning on letting me wait all night after I let you take my belongings? The small creature looked meekly at the floor. Well, no matter. This will stave off the hunger. The Hastamt brought a spoon out from under his thick beard and began to eat. Since you've already helped yourself to some of my objects, I hardly think a reward should be necessary. The small creature hung its head as the hushdump to put another spoonful into his mouth. Fine. Here. I borrowed this from the wretched one. I have no use for it, so you might as well take it. Now go away. As the hustum filled the spoon once more, a long strand of thick silver hair came off and landed on the ground in front of the small creature. Who okay, and then he gave me something as well. Hmm. Is that what I think it is? The guard stomped exclaimed as the small creature approached him. Is that my whetstone? Where did you find it? I don't even remember the last time I saw it. The guard stomped let out a sigh of relief. Thank you for finding it for me, little one. My old worn down tools have been the only thing standing in the way of me bringing this farm back on its feet. The guard stomped right. I'm afraid I can't find much of a reward for you. This old hammer shaft is of good quality, but I seem to have misplaced the metal head. I can't understand how I managed to lose these things. The guard stump scratched his forehead as he handed the hammer sh Perhaps you can find a use for it, little one. I'm sorry. Hey! An angry voice emanated from the shed as the... I did! The guard stomped was staying. An old guard stomped appeared to have made the sh... I hope you find your place in... I hope you find your... There was an old piece of cloth lying on the ground, seemingly being used as a doormat. It looks like someone has been wiping. Hey!
creature searched the ground for anything useful. Amongst the shattered bones, one piece in the circle. Do I look like this on the inside? The small creature wondered, looking hard. of bone to cut the stitches that held the cloth in place. The scarecrow sprung to life, quietly watching its visitor. Touching the scarecrow in the middle of the field. The small This be enough to replace the cloth? The small creature asked as it presented the hay to the guard stomped. Hey, well I suppose I could use that instead. I only found this piece of cloth the other night while keeping an eye on the field, but it's already becoming too dirty to wipe my feet on. The guard stomped responded as he handed the dirty piece. My hat, 
He had it, didn't he? That wretched thief. The hot stumped put the hat on his head and made a sigh of relief. There, that's how things should be. The hustumped looked at the small creature. I suppose you want something for this, even though you've already taken my things. The hust. Here, I found this hammerhead while I was looking for my hat. It's missing its shaft, so I don't know what use you would have for it. But the dip. Using the fishing rod it just made, the small creature was able to reach the large glowing star in the middle of the spring. As the star's glow broke the surface of the water, an the small creature put the golden bracelet into the hole, a larger Alva appeared sitting on the stone. This Alva was more beautiful than anything the creature could have imagined, with white glowing hair flowing over the rough surface of the stone, and a shining silver crown on her head. The small creature dared not reach out to the more beautiful than all other Alvor, the Alv Queen had appeared on top of The small creature's humbled words broke the silence. Hello. I don't want to disturb you, beautiful queen, but if you would allow me but a few moments of watching your people dance, I would be most content. I don't know where else to go, as I don't know where I belong in this world. The Alf Queen remained silent, yet seemingly not displeased by the presence of the small creature. As the dance continued, the creature watched the glowing beings in silence, entranced by their beauty. Suddenly, in a chanting voice soft as a whisper, the Alf Queen spoke. Her words were not of this world, and even though the creature could not understand them, it felt their power within its small body. As the Alv Queen started to fade along with her dancing Alvor, the smaller circle of mushrooms began to glow, as if responding to her enchanting voice. As the creature faded from the circle, it felt as if reappearing someplace else, leaving the farmlands far behind. Yet the creature was saddened, for even though the beings inhabiting the farm might not have given it the kindest of welcomes into this world, it had felt like a small part of their existence, recognized as a being, albeit an insignificant one, of its own. Now. As the small creature once more began to explore its unfamiliar surroundings, it felt alone. Alright, and that's chapter one, so we're gonna go.